Okay, so this is this is kind of fun. F6, we're talking about textures and foods. Um, so uh, join us. So uh, first we want to talk about a dispersed system. So a dispersed system is if we have, and this is again an IB definition, a chemically stable mixture of one phase uh, in another largely immiscible phase. So we have two different things that are mixed together. Um, and we can't tell that there's two different things there. That, so a good example is um, a dispersed system would be milk. So there's proteins in the milk, there's calcium in the milk, and it's also mainly water, right? But you can't see that there's different pieces. Kind of what we generally think of in chemistry as just a solution, a uh, homologous solution. But uh, if we're talking about the food, we're talking about a dispersed system as being kinetically stable. And it means it's not going to settle out. So the milk... The proteins and stuff aren't going to settle on the bottom. Obviously, if we leave it long enough, then it's going to go rancid, and that's that's a, we've already talked about that. But in itself, take it out of the fridge, pour it into the glass, it's a chemically stable mixture. All right, that's a dispersed system in our food. And, but we have different dispersed systems that we have to talk about. One is a suspension. So the first one is a suspension. Well, suspension is kind of a, a unique uh, dispersed system because it is heterogeneous. So you can see... Um, that there's different different particles in there, and there are large enough that over time they are going to settle out. So there's going to be sedimentation in a suspension, um, and it says they usually have to be bigger than one micrometer. I don't think we have to memorize the the size by by any regards, but we do want to know that suspensions are heterogeneous. That means we can see the particles in them, and it might might be chemically stable um, at, or kinetically stable for a little bit, but over time um, the suspensions will eventually settle unlike colloids, which, again, is something different. We'll hold off on talking about colloids here. So a suspension of liquid droplets or fine solid particles in a gas is called an aerosol or a particulate. In the atmosphere, dust, dust in the air, could be considered a suspension. So we can actually think of it like the name says. So a suspension, something is suspended in the fluid or something is suspended in the air but it will not stay that way. If it slows down, if it cools off, normally those will, um, over time, uh, sediment, they'll fall out of the solution. Okay, emulsions are, are kind of different. Emulsions are kind of interesting. Is there, there are two or more liquids that normally um, don't mix. So we could think about this being like oil and water, right? So that's probably the easiest example. So an emulsion is like oil and water, and generally they don't mix. Those two layers are going to sit on top of each other. But in an emulsion, um, they've been dispersed between each other. Um, so they've been dispersed across the, across the interface. So this is taking that oil, shaking it up, and we're getting those oil particles dispersed through um, through the liquid, through the water, but again, over time, notice what happens. It's going to start settling out back at the top again. Notice if we have something, and going on to the next standard, it's going to talk about emulsifiers. So what emulsifiers can do is they can keep an emulsion in this phase. So notice this is our oil, this is our water. We, you know what? A lot of times they talk about salad dressing. So this is our salad dressing where we have oil and water. You mix it up. Now it's an emulsion where those two normally um, uh, immiscible solutions or immiscible liquids, so one is polar, one is nonpolar, don't normally mix, but we mix them up. We can physically make them mix, physically make them an emulsion, but over time it's going to settle back out and the oil is going to move back on the top, liquid is going to go down. Um, what an emulsifier does when we get to emulsifiers is they're going to help keep that emulsion in, I guess, what we'd call suspension. Foam is a little bit different. Foams are <laughs> food. Can you believe we're in chemistry and we're talking about foams? And we have these beautiful pictures of foams. Um, what a foam is, is the incorporation of air into uh, the solution or into the solid. I guess these all would be considered solutions, but it's um, the incorporation of air. So it's mixed up with air, it's whipped up with air to get a different texture, a lighter texture, or a different feel. Like this, I love the sentence, a different mouth feel. Mmm. Mm, this foam has a different mouthfeel. Mm, I like it. Um, so it's just whipping up some air. Like uh, you could make a foam out of, obviously, out of milk um, or milk products. This one's out of milk and chocolate. A lot of these are, are milk-based foams. Finally, like I said, what we're going to talk about last is emulsifiers. An emulsifier, oh, this is a great word, is an emollient. 
I think I'm not saying that right at all, uh, but emulsifier increases the kinetic stability, which means it, it allows those two layers to be mixed um, and to stay mixed as opposed to them separating. So emulsifiers, mainly like we said in that previous example, help oil and water stay mixed. Okay, We can notice mechanically mix them by beating or mixing, beating, mixing. You can mix those oil and water layers what the emulsifier will help keep them mixed and prevent them from separating out. So, what's a good emulsifier? Uh, egg yolks um, help those two layers mix. Uh, honey, uh, mustard, um, protein, soy, lectin. Um, actually, when we think about emulsifiers, one emulsifier that you can think about is soap is actually an emulsifier. Because how soap helps is soap actually has a polar end and a non-polar end. So what this, what soap can do is, is, I mean, besides mostly being alkalized, I know we've talked about a lot of soaps being alkalized in the past, but they're also emulsifiers because they can help the water, um, the polarness of the water, uh, clean off the uh, non-polarness of the oils and the fats that might be on your plates and your dishes from, from eating. And so really a soap is a type of emulsifier because it helps the water mix with the oil and, and wash the oil off. That's why if you use too much soap, it kind of, it, you, can't, uh, you can't wash off the oil. What you want is the soap to kind of stick to the oil and the water to come through and uh, rinse it off. If there's too much soap, then you're just rinsing off soap, rinsing off soap until you get to the final layer of soap where it's stuck to the oil and then you can actually clean the dish. So, a little something about emulsifiers there today. And uh, hope you enjoyed your standard level food chemistry.